So at this point in the campaign, it's all about the ground game, getting out the vote. But Election Day is really the ultimate test of the party strategy. Did Justin Trudeau get hurt by the early election call? Or can he convince voters the Liberal brand deserves a majority? Will Aaron O'Toole's political makeover from the true blue conservative to the Brian Mulroney 2.0 win him the day or alienate the base? And will the NDP be rewarded for their advocacy during the COVID crisis, or will they be burned again by the strategic vote for the Liberals? And what about the Bloc and the PPC? Will they emerge as the big newsmakers, or what about the Greens? Let's figure it all out. Jenny Byrne, former senior advisor to Stephen Harper, joins us. Farouk Kareem, former NDP caucus press secretary, is here. And Scott Reid, CTV political commentator and former uh, senior advisor to uh, Prime Minister Paul Martin. Uh, great to have all of you here. Scott, let me start with you. Uh, like, it's all about framing the debate. I don't know what the ballot box question is. It's weird because I don't think it's settled yet. Justin Trudeau, they hung around his neck was, you're an opportunist for calling this election. He said, no, it's about something else. Did he manage to turn the corner and, and what's it about for him right now? Well, the great benefit he had is that circumstance have uh, conspired to benefit him. And so he started this campaign on defense. Why are you calling a campaign in the middle of a pandemic? You know, the Conservatives really hope to reframe this election around affordability, economic recovery. But here as we end, you know, in large part, catalyzed by the events in Alberta last Wednesday, as we end this campaign, it is about pandemic. And I think a lot of voters, particularly in Quebec and Ontario, are saying, you know what, I actually have to cast my ballot based on which of these people do I think can best protect my interests in terms of the fourth wave, in terms of the pandemic. And that's not where the Conservatives want to end this campaign, and it will benefit Trudeau. Yeah, I, I, the question is enough for what he originally wanted, which is a majority, Jenny. So there's that question. Aaron O'Toole, who had put Justin Trudeau on the defense about this, uh, but then he, you know, he's gone from true blue to, uh, as I said, sort of Brian Mulroney 2. He literally is trotting out Brian Mulroney saying, this is not your dad's Conservative Party. Uh, has he turned the corner on that? Like, can, can, is that the effective strategy to, to win the middle, win Ontario, and, and win the election? Well, I, I think when Conservatives don't run as Conservatives, they lose. They're, they're, think of something in our in, in our history when Ontario was won uh, by, by a Conservative trying to out-liberal uh, the Liberal Party. So I don't. I, I think if that was the strategy to win Ontario, I think it was wrong. I think if you look at uh, Stephen Harper and the governments that he, he won three elections, including a majority where he won the, the vast majority of seats in, in Ontario. Doug Ford uh, won in 2018 uh, his number one issue. I worked on that campaign was opposing a carbon tax. And so I think if, if Aaron's strategy in terms of the policies that he have was to win Ontario, I guess we'll see if it'll work uh, uh, tomorrow, but it, it doesn't look like it is. Well, we'll see. And, and then meantime, the NDP, you know, I get their strategy, you know, we're the real progressive, Justin Trudeau doesn't walk the walk, the walk. but can, look, in the end of the day, Liberals are going to say, you know, it's a tight race, a vote for uh, Jagmeet Singh is a vote for Aaron O'Toole. How, how did Jagmeet Singh ward that off? Right, I think he did a successful job throughout the campaign, making sure to inoculate the progressive voters by saying what? By going back to the Trudeau record of six years. There's a credibility gap, and so you can't believe him. He's been hammering that message for 30 days because he knew at the end of the campaign the Liberals will play the old playbook of... You have, to say, you have to save me against the big back right wing. But now he ha successfully, I think we'll see what the results, but I think by saying, by reminding people, progressive voters of the, of the record of Mr. Trudeau, it reminds them of the credibility gap. Can you believe this guy? So, Scott, what, what's the response to that? Well, you just power through. And I, and I think the big question really is for the NDP. Are they going to be, I'll be watching Ontario on election night to see if the NDP can maintain their vote somewhere between 18 and 22 percent. If it dips below 19, 18 percent, then you'll know that Trudeau's picked their pocket. If they can keep it at 20, 22 percent, then you'll know that they've held their vote. And this kind of dynamic with what feels like a very close election, certainly the polls have said it's a very close election, I think you'll see some New Democrats bolt and say, I just can't take the chance. The stakes are too high. I'm talking about whether or not people are going to be vaccinated, whether or not it's going to be safe. Right. And I think that's going to cause a little bit of trouble in a couple of real competitive spots for the NDP. We're talking a lot about, Jenny, that the PPC vote and split on the right, and we talked about the strategic vote the, uh, on the progressive side of the spectrum. You know, there's other dynamics at play here. The block we're not mentioning, the Green Party, that's it. People say, oh, who, that's irrelevant. 
Why are those dynamics something like if you were back in the campaign, why would you be watching the green vote or the PPC vote or the block? Well, because the, 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 the dynamics, to your point, are uh, uh, riding by riding. So let's take a riding in Nova Scotia, West Nova. Uh, it was a riding where we won with 39% of the vote. The Liberals had 36% of the vote. The Greens got 13% of the vote, the NDP 11. There is no Green Party there, that candidate, this, this election. There is no Green candidate. So in a riding like that, if you're looking at 13% of the vote uh, from what was would say the progressive side of things where does that go and that isn't factoring in the the where the PPC is depending at different levels you're seeing anywhere from four percent to to ten or eleven percent uh, which which regardless of what people may say 75 percent of the people that are voting for PPC have voted for conservative in the last election so those splits are key that and what the Greens are not running candidates in something like 80 85 85 ridings so that's a that's a, that can a lot of thumbs that are not on scales on election night, and yeah. that's going to make a big difference. We think about it as a game of inches, but in some ridings, it's going to be a game of yards, the presence of the PPC and the absence yeah. of the Greens. Okay, let, let's just project out, like, what looks like victory? Uh, the NDP lost 20 seats in 2019, and Jagmeet Singh danced and declared victory, and I don't know, I, maybe that's the new math, but that was victory, and they <laughs> love him there. What does he have to do now to... to, to to win back the 20 seats he lost. Like, what's victory for the NDP? I think it's an increase in number of seats. It might be a, a foothold in Toronto. Downtown Toronto would be nice to go back there. Uh, any increase in percentage of vote, an increase in seats, a presence in the biggest province, I think that's a win at the end of the night. And, and in Quebec, he's got one seat. Right. I mean, if in he Quebec, gets... it's a longer war. Right. It's, a, it's a longer... If Ruth uh, Ellen Brosseau wins and they double the two, he, he declared... That's victory. a good point. On, in Quebec, because of the English debate re, uh, uh, reaction in, in, in Quebec, the bloc has coalesced a lot of the vote, and so Ruth Ellen will have a tougher time. In. What about for Mr. Trudeau, Scott? Uh, he called this wanting a majority. Even if he wins a minority, but it's a weaker minority... Like, what does that do to his viability as a leader? I don't think it does anything to his viability as a leader within the party. Like, if you're asking me, is he vulnerable within uh, the Liberal Party? Well, you know, no. Uh, this is Justin Trudeau's party. It really is. I mean, after the party was burned to the ground in 2011, it's been rebuilt around him. So he's safe as houses. But it will change the way in which he performs as prime minister. I think this would be a different minority parliament than the last one. And one of the key things for the NDP is will they hold exclusively the balance of power? If they do, well, then that's going to be a big deal. You don't think don't. his brand suffers? Like a of third election? Yeah, he's but, weakened inside the party at all, even if he wins? Not, not within the party. Okay. Not, not, not within the party, I don't think. But obviously, his brand has taken a hit. Six years of incumbency. And, right. you know, these, that's why the first two weeks was such a beating. Of course, his brand has taken a hit. Uh, Jenny, and, and then there's the conservative math. Like, Andrew Scheer increased his seat count won the popular vote, took the Liberals to a minority and lost his job. Uh, Aaron O'Toole might increase seats, but if he doesn't win, what happens to his viability as a leader? I, I, listen, I think that uh, I, we'll see what happens, but I think that Aaron O'Toole took a, a gamble in terms of how he's running this campaign as opposed to uh, what he ran on his leadership uh, campaign. And so I think, that, uh, I think that if he is not declared the winner of the 44th uh, general uh, election of the 44th parliament, I think that uh, he will have a hard time staying on as leader. Is that right? And because the factions, what, some of the factions that he courted on the leadership, uh, the social conservative faction, the Harper conservative, they'll just feel like... This is well, not a, well, this, this election, not the guy we this election, for? this election more than 2019 was winnable. This, this, if if conservatives do not win this election, it was yeah. entirely winnable because we led the polls for uh, at least two weeks. It is this. Never has there been a time to unseat right. Justin Trudeau for people that do not uh, support him. Uh, so that is what I think. Regardless of what stripe of conservative you might consider yourself, that's what they'll be looking at. Don't say breakaway on an open net. We've heard that before. All right, I got to leave it there. Scott Reed, uh, Jenny Byrne, and Farouk, uh, thanks so much. Great to have the three of you here. Thank you.